think of this as an old school Miro board, except I'm using post-its. I'm trying to describe the moving parts of Open Global Mind and how they fit together. So the first piece over here is basically roles, which is we have uh, fundamentally anybody who joins the conversation as a member. We have no membership dues. We have no quiz. Uh, well, none of that, but but people are participating. So those are all members, some of whom are builders. And builders are people who don't have a particular um, project in mind or a goal in mind. They really love getting things done. So builders are looking for projects to help build. Uh, might also call them makers. Uh, then we have maybe three other categories. Champions who do have one particular project. So Klaus Mager is a champion around rethinking the food system. Kevin Doyle Jones is a champion around uh, figuring out how to do neighborhood economics, small scale economics for underserved communities, etc. Um, stewards are different from champions. Stewards are actually holders of things that later we might call quests here. I'll describe them in a second. But stewards have responsibility for stewarding a commons, a project, a guild, things like that. And then we also have curators, and because this is Open Global Mind, it starts from brain-like or kumu-like or mapping sort of things, curators are people like me who are busy curating assets to put into the commons. So those are the kinds of members. And then a few members, we have to figure out who's going to do this, but the goal is really to be able to dub a few people who have contributed a lot to OGM and its development uh, as OGM fellows, and to fill a reservoir full of uh, funds of some sort that can be distributed among the fellows so that they can continue to do this peacefully. Um, we're trying to organize as guilds. So the idea of a guild is a particular craft or skill category. And I've listed three here, they're starting points, uh, and I think we have to sort of look deeply at what kind of guilds are special to Open Global Mind uh, because they match the kind of secret sauce we bring to things. So uh, one of them is called Map Whisperers. I'm a map whisperer because I use the brain and I love using the brain to be in conversation with people trying to make decisions and trying to figure out what the world is like, whether it's for their startup or some commons or some uh, civic quest. But I love doing that and I know a lot of people who fall into this category, so we might form up a guild called Map Whisperers. Uh, another one is story threaders, which I've described elsewhere, but is basically how do we create expansive thinking around a set of ideas, enhancing a meeting, for example, with expressions of the, the, the shiny nuggets that would have been dropped or lost in ordinary process. So uh, how do we create a guild of practitioners of story threading? And then this one, just a placeholder name, but space holders, because we have a lot of black belt facilitators and people who are trying to create that open hearted space. Uh, so uh, how do we form a guild there? And does that guild overlap with <clears throat> pyragogy and liberating structures and other sorts of places? Or maybe do we join their guild? But I think there's a, there's a place for that. Um, we then organize ourselves around quests and quests are time bounded. Quests are projects that have an ending. So one quest that is active right now that we're just sort of manifesting as a quest is the idea of what is OGM's organizational structure and what are our governing principles. Another one that needs to exist is how do we bridge to other organizations? What is the process of outreach so that we can uh, really fruitfully approach other organizations and say, what do, you, we, what do you need? Here's what we do. How can we help you, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, another quest is, hey, we already have a few too many platform choices and where we're putting our assets, what should that be? And how do we decide on that? Uh, there's clearly a quest around learning, which could turn into other sorts of things, but, but we have a lot of people deeply interested in learning, and Kiko Lab is doing the cool laboratories, so that, that clearly is the heart of, of this quest. Um, Klaus would be on a quest for the regenerative agriculture and food system, and we, and we need to figure out what are the other moving parts of that. Uh, there is also already a quest uh, called Free Jerry's Brain, which is trying to take my data from inside of the proprietary brain and liberate it so that other people can riff on it and we can experiment with what the future open global mind looks like and so that this becomes a more useful asset and so that um, uh, makers, builders, can go riff on the brain data, mine and others, like Mark Trexler's Climate Web, uh, and start to figure out what does a conversation between three people using different tools look like, and uh, how does machine learning fit in there, et cetera, et cetera. So that, that's kind of uh, part of what this quest is about. Now, all of us are busy nurturing and feeding different kinds of commons. 
And so I've listed a couple commons here. One commons is the data that would come out of my brain. So Free Jerry's brain would be intended to feed the commons of my brain as a more public entity. Right now you can go browse it, but only if you view it through the brain software. So what else does that look like? Other people have brains, but there's other kinds of open content, open mapping, which uh, might evolve into this emerging OGM brain. And I, I use brain here loosely not to mean the product, but rather uh, when my brain data meets Mark's brain data meets Jean's uh, and, and uh, Christina's Kumu data meets Miro sketch it, what does that look like? And so we will also in the, in the interim uh, be creating open software, which we will contribute to the commons. And we also are building trusted communities, which are a form of commons. So all of us are busy creating commons that are nurturing to this open global mind vision. And this chart is meant for, in particular, for new participants, new members coming into OGM to find their way to the quests that are interesting, interesting to them, the guilds that are interesting to them, to label, label themselves as a particular kind of role. And I'm almost forgetting, um, we have partner organizations that are their own entities. So Collective Next is a going concern. Part of the reason OGM exists is that I met Collective Next and we all started brainstorming on what, what you're hearing now. Uh, Chico Lab, uh, Lauren and Charles are busy doing things. Uh, Pete Kaminsky is forming up CSC, which is brand new and kind of spinning out of OGM in, a, in an interesting way. These are all partner organizations that remain independent entities, but are deeply enmeshed. So a Collective Next I've listed here is a, fu a funding, a founding partner. Uh, and then there's other organizations, and there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these. In my brain, I have a thought about OGM neighbor communities like the Peer-to-Peer -peer Foundation, Theory U, and a series of others, you know, uh, Presencing as part of Theory U, and so forth. But, but the outreach process is meant to figure out how do we bridge to partner organizations, how do they find their way in to become members, uh, some of those people would join some of our guilds, uh, and some of those people would inform our quests. And if, if we're really fortunate, then we help them feed and maintain and steward all of the commons that we touch. So for example, the Peer-to-Peer -peer Foundation is already very busy creating a commons of information through the Peer-to-Peer -peer Foundation wiki, uh, which has existed for a long time. So that's a, an attempt to describe sort of the moving parts of OGM. Uh, all feedback welcome. Um, thanks very much.